everybody. Amen. Let's stand and turn to the word of the Lord. Please forgive me this morning. I didn't wear a tie. I was not intending on being here uh, at the pulpit. That is, Brother Masters asked me to read. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20 and around verses 20, I'll begin reading. This speaks of the request of James and John's mother in the scripture. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant thee these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left, in thy kingdom. Verse 22, But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with a baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. Verse 23, And he said unto them, You shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with a baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. When he then, <clears throat> excuse me, when he, and when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. Verse 25, and Jesus called them unto him and said, you know not, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be the chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. I'm thankful today that in this time of the year that we've celebrated Christmas, been much said about it. The sermon last Sunday morning was about the Christmas season and the giving of Christ, his life for mankind. I'm glad today to know that Jesus Christ will minister in my life. Jesus Christ came to this world not to seek and to, to destroy, but to seek and to save that which was lost. And therefore, by that redemptive plan, I'm glad today that it's not about who chooses as such in the scripture with the two sons. But it's to whosoever will let every man come and drink of this, this water of life freely. The Holy Ghost is beautiful. The power of God is beautiful, and I'm thankful today that Jesus is here to minister in our lives. The cross, the cross where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Uh, today we're only going to have this morning service. It is the fifth Sunday. So due to being the fifth Sunday of the month, we're just going to have this service this morning and we'll dismiss service this evening. 
Sister Ginger wanted everybody to know whoever wants to be a part of the Deaf Ministries Break Every Chain uh, that they will be doing this month to please meet in the ladies' prayer room immediately after service. Um, it's not going to be completely Deaf Ministry. They kind of have a, a skit thing to go along with it. Uh, it's going to be powerful. I've seen some of it done already. And I'm really excited about it. So she asked anybody that wants to join in with that. You're more than welcome to join us. Just meet us immediately after service in the ladies prayer room. Uh, Tuesday evening, we're going to be having a special New Year's Eve service at 1030 p.m. After the service, our youth will be having a lock in just to kind of stay up here and hang out and have fellowship with one another. And do not forget your bread charts this morning. Anybody that wants a bread chart, we have them here on the pulpit. I believe we also have them out in the foyer for you. Also, there's a sign-up sheet that will be uh, the deadline for the sign-up sheet. If you read your Bible through last year, is going to be the 5th of January. So please get your names on there before then. Amen? Now, we had a baby dedication last Sunday. We're going to have a baby dedication this Sunday. So how many of you are glad for that? Amen? We're going to be able to dedicate Courtney and Jeremy's little baby Sienna this morning to the Lord. And I'm so thankful for that, to be able to give a child's life up to God and say, God, my child is in your hands. Amen. Worship with, with us as we sing this morning. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. We want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning, if we could all stand. Uh, please remember to pray for brother and sister masters. Sister Beth Dole, also Sister Manning needs prayer. Uh, glad brother Ron is able to be in service with us this morning. Amen. Please keep him in your prayers. Uh, brother and sister Humphreys have been pretty sick here lately, so we need to remember them. Also pray for Cody Humphreys. Brother McCall is still in rehab uh, for the leg break last time he fell, so remember him. Layla Hathcock, Brittany Brene, and also Katie Hampton. And I have a request here. Shirley uh, says pray for a family from Brother Walker's church. Brother, is that right? Brother Walker, Sister Kayla Walker's dad, mm -hmm. the lady in our church that passed away. Okay, so let's remember her family and also that church family that the Lord would comfort them in their time of need. Anybody have any other prayer requests?
Right, let's bring these go ahead, sister. Okay. Let's bring these needs before the Lord this morning. Thank God, we ask that you would touch and bless each and every need in this place, dear God, that has been brought forth before you this morning, dear God, Lord. Lord, and that you would answer them according to your will, dear God, Lord, your perfect will and your perfect way and all knowledge and wisdom. Lord, we thank you, Jesus God. Trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the in the Lord. Jesus, Jesus. glad we can trust in him this morning. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to go ahead and take up this morning's offering. Uh, get your tithing ready and your offerings ready this morning. Lord, we ask that you would bless each and every person that gives sacrificially unto your name this morning, dear God. Lord, we praise you and we worship you for all that you have done. Bless us this morning in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Good to see all of you here this morning. Be in God's house and to worship Him in spirit and in truth. You know, it's always exciting 
to me and always has been when we get ready to begin a new year. And uh, we look back many times on the old year and maybe we didn't accomplish as much as we would like but we did get some things done. So we look forward to a new year where we can get more done. Amen. Uh, we also want to be praying for Brother Don. He has to leave, go back to work today. And uh, be praying for him. He's got a pew full of his young'uns there. We're glad they're here with him. I know he is. Pray for our sick. We didn't get all of them mentioned. Brother Bob Norton's been real sick. Brother David's been real sick. Just, just whatever it is going around. And um, but God's able to take care of that. There are a few things that I do want to mention uh, before we do our ded baby dedication. Uh, some new new things uh, we are this year uh, want to prepare for Bible quizzing again now we we're not it, it, it's a little late as you know you got to start early if you're going to do a lot of competing but uh Brother Richie and Sister Kelly have uh, agreed to uh, spearhead our Bible quizzing. Bible quizzing is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And uh, we don't know exactly what will be done this year, except maybe a little prep work, let you know what to expect next year. And then about September or so next year, whenever the new Bible quiz and stuff comes out, we going to hit it full force. So what we'd like for you to do, uh, young people and children, is uh, if you are interested in getting into Bible quizzing, which is one of the most wonderful things that I know, if you or your parents would let uh, Sister Kelly know we uh, would like for you to work with that with us. Or maybe there's uh, particularly a young adult or two, but uh, someone who would be willing to help them uh, because we, you know, when you take trips, we have to have chaperones. And children need people to quote to. There's a lot of work to Bible quizzing. And uh, probably between now and when we actually kick off to try to prepare for competition and all that, there's probably uh, going to be some fun things for you to do with Bible quizzing. And, you know, I'd hate for you to miss out on the fun. So, uh, how many of you uh, think you're going to be interested in that? Raise your hand. And you think maybe your children, you'd like to see them get to Bible quizzing. Amen. I was talking to someone uh, just yesterday, and their children at Brother Mangan's church had become involved in, well, it was uh, his brother David McKithen, his grandchildren, becoming involved in Bible quizzing Brother Mangan's church, and they're so excited about that. Also, uh, in the next couple of three weeks, we are starting a new class on Sunday, and Brother Hubert is going to be teaching in that class. And uh, we particularly would like for new people that are coming to our church, uh, people just praying through, and uh, new people coming that maybe just move in, maybe they already have the Holy Ghost we want to offer it to them first now there is no age limit except 
that uh, you know you'd be an adult uh, somewhere past the, the teens class and that uh, but from there up you know, age limit we even have some of our young people young married couples that maybe you would be interested now this class does not go on indefinitely I think there's 10 or 13 lessons and then uh, you will be coming back into the auditorium and we'll have a new group it's going to be a, a rotating class uh, I don't I don't think the new converts class would be the name of it because we don't want anybody that's it doesn't matter how long you've been in church but if you've wondered about why we teach what we teach uh, that's what Brother Hubert is going to be teaching. So, uh, there, the, the class will be limited as far as how many can he can handle at a time. And so, uh, see Brother Hubert or maybe even Sister Rhonda or uh, if you would like to sign up for that class and I encourage you to if you don't make the first uh, the first time in that class if it gets too crowded then we will take them in order as they're signed up and uh, you can catch it the next time but we hope this will be an ongoing thing uh, just an orientation of why we believe what we believe uh, why, why do we teach what we teach? And uh, so it's going to be a good class, I think. Brother Hubert is an excellent teacher. Amen. And uh, he has already for some time now been uh, getting material together and uh, working on those lessons. And I'm looking forward to it. I don't know. If I could get by with it, I'd go set it. Hallelujah. So I want you to remember that. Brother Clint mentioned our service on Tuesday, which is New Year's Eve, beginning at 1030. Uh, I want to encourage everybody to come. Uh, you, you can come casual. Uh, you won't have to, we won't have to dress up. I probably won't have on a suit and tie. Uh, we want to we want to be comfortable. But what we're hoping to have is some good testimonies, and even that night, our platform rules will be relaxed. Some of you may not know you're going to be on the platform, so uh, our platform dress code will be relaxed. If you got on a pair of jeans, that'd be all right. Amen. But uh, we want to have a good time. We're going to have a, a time of singing. We're, probably there will be some new songs. I know there will be some old songs, some of those old standard hymns that we love so well, some testimonies. And we're just going to have a good time of singing and fellowship and testimony and just see what happens. And then about midnight, we're going to pray the old year out and the new year in just have a have a good time so I encourage you to come if you miss it I think you're going to miss a real blessing and a good time in the Holy Ghost amen this time uh, if if Jeremy and Courtney will come bring Sienna we want to dedicate her to the Lord Amen. Sister Gail, any other family that would like to come stand with them? Amen. You're welcome to come. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Appreciate this family. Amen. Sister Gail and I go a long way back to our high school days. I say it's a long way. She might not like to think about it like that. But it's been a while since those days. Amen. And uh, 
I appreciate Courtney and Jeremy bringing Sienna to the house of God. Amen. I'm sure since she's been born, she's probably been to church more than anywhere else. Amen. In her little short life, she is here often. Uh, I want to read a, just a, a little bit of scripture. In Psalms chapter 127, in the third verse, it says this, that lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. And uh, as we as we today talk about the dedication of a child, Jeremy and Courtney, you know, there's a, one of our president's wives some time ago made the statement that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it doesn't. You hear me? It does not take a village to raise a child. In fact, if you let the village raise Sienna, there's no telling what you'll have. It'll be a child that's totally out of control, confused and mixed up, doesn't understand right from wrong. But if you raise her with that Bible as a guideline and a church as just support, in fact, this church cannot raise her. She, while she is loved by this church, and, and you all are loved by this church, there is nothing like a mother and a daddy this is your responsibility. Uh, I don't have to say, Sister Gail loves that baby. Amen. I was talking to Brother Mike Smith before church, and he was telling me that he hadn't hunted much. In fact, he wouldn't go hunting yesterday till the grandbaby left the house. Us grandparents, we, we love children to death, but it's not my responsibility to rear my grandchildren. Now, I think I, I think that I am responsible to be an example, not just to my grandchildren, but to the world. But the bottom line is, Sienna's your baby. She belongs to you, too. And it is your responsibility to raise her in the fear of God and to point her in the right direction. The scripture that we just read, children are the heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is Israel. She is given to you by God. Amen. And then it says, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, and, uh, so are children of the youth. And for a long time, I pondered, what in the world does it mean? As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children. Of course, back in those days, uh, people fought with bows and arrows. That's the way they protected their homeland. Uh, they hunted with bows and arrows. That's the way they, in those days, killed deer, and they did. Old Testament tells us that Esau was a, a man of the field, and he hunted. And, and he, I know he deer hunted because his father loved the venison that he would bring home. And he wasn't the only one. There's a fellow even involved in the Tower of Baal, that uh, the Bible called Nimrod a mighty hunter. 
And so they hunted and they provided for their family and they protected their country with a bow and with an arrow. And so scripture says as the, as the arrow is in the hand of a mighty man, so are children. What does that mean? It means that a mighty hunter, a mighty man of war, could take an arrow and he could guide that arrow to a mark, to a particular place. And so a good daddy and a good mama, as a hunter can guide the arrow, so can you be influential to this baby to guide her to a particular mark. You can't do it by yourself. You've got to have God's help. And it takes a lot of practice. Amen. At first, it might be a lot of hit and miss, just like the mighty man with the bow. He didn't come up automatically shooting that arrow to the mark where he wanted it to go. But God is saying in his word, a mighty man is a man who can take his children like a man would a bow and an arrow and guide that child through life so that she ends up where she needs to be. And God, help us to not miss the mark with her. Be such a tragedy if we miss the mark. So God, help us not to. So today you've come to